Would you like to see an early Quran manuscript that has 11 corrections or variants on a single page? If so, stick around. That's what we're going to talk about today. And the last example I'll show you is actually an alternate word in the verse. Well, you're going to enjoy the manuscript page that I'm showing you today. Uh, it is from, I think, from the early 8th century. So about 100 years, within 100 years of Muhammad's death. And uh, it is a fragment. And by fragment, uh, it is, uh, I just want to clarify that term. It's a technical term. Obviously, when we think of a fragment, we sometimes think of just a little tiny piece of something. Uh, but in terms of uh, manuscripts and Quran manuscripts, when we say the word fragment, it is a term that refers to anything that is less than a full Quran. So a fragment could be, indeed, a tiny little piece, or it could be one single page couple pages or 50 pages as long as it's not a full Quran. So the one that we're looking at today is uh, one of the pages of a fragment of 11 pages. Let's go ahead and get going. Here is the page. It is the front side of page 8 of this manuscript that lives at the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha. I went and saw it in 2015 as a postdoctoral Rice Rockwell scholar photographed all its pages as well as many others. This however is a picture of the uh, from the museum itself. I'm going to show you 13 different things that are going on on this page. And let's take a look at the first one. It is here in Surah 699. In the text today it reads, Fidelikum la ayatin li kaumin yukminun, which means here indeed are signs for a people who believe. However, as it was written in this manuscript, it says, uh, la ayatin la kum in kuntum yukminun. Here indeed are signs for you if you believe, and the you plural if you plural believe. So it is a difference. Uh, it does make sense, but uh, it is not the way the text stands today. And I've checked the, a couple of the earliest uh, texts here. And, and the things I'm going to talk to you about today, I haven't done a thorough survey of every single one. So I'm going to leave some of this to those of you out there who are very familiar with the materials. If anybody wants to add in the comment section anything that you have found on some of these things, that would be so helpful to me. So we can crowdsource some of this. But um, I've looked in uh, Tafsir Makatil, which is an early Tafsir. I see mention of this phrase, La ayatin la kaumen yukminun, but it's only he, he only tells what, uh, he clarifies the meaning of it, he doesn't mention any alternate reading there. And similarly with uh, Tafsir Mujahid, which is uh, one of the earliest uh, Tafsirs that we have, there's no mention of this verse. So there we go, that's the first one we're looking at. Let's move on to the next. Okay, this is a place near the top of the page where there is the word bihi. It's in 699, and I, I can see what's going on here because this, this word bihi does follow the previous instance. It follows the word fa'achrajna, and the word fa'achrajna from it uh, occurs twice in this verse. And the word bihi does follow the previous instance of this word in the verse. So it seems possible that the scribe got to the second instance of the word and then wrote the word bihi, thinking that he was following the first instance, first occurrence of the word, perhaps. The strange thing about it, however, is that instead of continuing then with uh, following what follows the word bihi in the text as we have it in the Haas, he instead continues on with the verse as it occurs after the word minhu from it in the Haas text. So not entirely sure what's going on here, but that is what is existing in this manuscript. Okay, here's the next one, and I've added some color here so you could see a little bit of what's going on. It's also from verse 699, and the text today reads, uh, Anzaru thamara, uh, thamarihi uh, idda athmara, and there are, there are two things missing in the manuscript that are present in Haas text, and that is the uh, third person singular pronoun of the possessive of uh, thamara, which is fruit, their fruits, but it would be his his fruit, I, I suppose, more literally. The upshot is that there is one fewer aleph in this space than there is in the standard text, the Haas text. So crowdsource this out to you. If you can see the sequence of letters as they occur in this manuscript, then think how you think the, um, the, the scribe was reading or intending this, uh, please leave a comment below and we'll take a look at that and see if we get some good answers there. All right, here's the next one, and in this spot, what has happened, and what you see inside the box there, is the place where an aleph initially stood, and that was the initial aleph of the word Allah, 
the effect of taking this Aleph away is to convert the, the, the name or the word Allah to the word Lilahi, uh, which has the meaning of to Allah. And that is, in fact, how it stands in the Hafs text. And the verse reads, Waja'alu lillahi uh, shuraka'a ajin. And this means they yet uh, they ascribed as partners to Allah the jinn. Ja'ala, the verb in this, has the sense of bringing. Um, in other words, they more literally brought the jinn as partners to Allah. This uh, exact phrase, Ja'alu lillahi, occurs in three other places in the Quran, in 1316, 1333, and 1430. And lahu, to him, is found in 4315. Now, when the verb ja'ala has a, a noun following it in the accusative, uh, it conveys a sense of acting upon the object. And it does have this causative sense in 1591, where it is said that they divided the Quran into parts. In 2734, where the kings were acting upon the inhabitants of a city. In 4319, uh, it can also carry the sense of putting the object somewhere, such as in 717, where it said that they put their fingers into their ears. The verb there is ja'alu. It can also have the sense of alleging something, as in 37158. When it comes to having God be the direct object, however, it's obviously problematic because it uh, it means acting upon God doing something to God. One can understand why uh, we don't see the word Allah uh, in the accusative sense anywhere else in the Quran following Ja'alu. So that all to say that I don't see how this uh, would have made sense at all. I don't see any other place in the Quran where that sort of formulation exists. So this is most likely just an error, and we'll move on to the next one now. All right, so in this case, this is kind of interesting because here later on in the same verse, there is a, a spot where the word yasifun exists today. However, in this manuscript, the word yashrikun was clearly first written here. Now, the words have a similar sense, and the effect of the verse is similar, but it is a different word. So you can see what the scribe did here, and I don't have pointers here to go on the screen, but you can see that where the darker ink is, the little vertical line there has closed the front end of the cough to convert it into a sod, and the uh, little tooth at the front end of that has been put in, and the fa and the ra have been inserted there as well. What is interesting here is that the preceding letters, the four teeth followed by the ra, the first letters of Yashrikun, have not been erased. So... As it stands, there are extra letters in this manuscript that don't seem to belong there. And we do see erasures elsewhere on this page, so I'm not sure why the corrector did not go to the effort of erasing those other letters. Let's move on to the next one. Going back up near the top of the page here, we're back to 699, I believe. And the word is mushtabiha. Uh, there is one more tooth here in this word in the F1924 text, which is my abbreviation for the standard text, the Hafs text, than there is in this manuscript. So it's just a variant. It's, a, it's one missing letter in this manuscript if we consider the standard to be the, the correct text. Not sure exactly what is uh, intended here, what's going on. I'm happy again to have comments in the bottom. All right, and so we want to move through uh, without taking too much time. The next one I'm showing you is 6106. The verse says, follow that which has been revealed to you, uhiya. However, in this manuscript, the word yuha is written instead, and it's the same word, but in the present tense. In other words, follow that which is being revealed to you from your Lord. So it works, but it is different from the standard text today. All right, so let's move on to the next one. This is the following verse, 6107, which reads in the Hafs text, Lao Sha A Allahu Ma Ashraku. Had Allah willed, they would not have been polytheists. As it is written in this manuscript, the final two letters of the verb are Nun Aleph instead of Wow Aleph, with the reading of Lao Sha A Allahu Ma Ashrakna. If Allah had willed, they would not have ascribed partners to us. Not a huge difference in the meaning, some difference, but not a huge difference in the overall sense of the verse, but definitely a substantive difference in the rasam. Okay, we're just going to move a few words later in the verse here, and in the Hafs text, this verse reads, Ja'alnaka alayhim, we have brought or we have appointed over them, you as a watcher over them, the word watcher is the next word, hafiz. In this manuscript, however, the final letter, the meme, is absent 
so it reads alehi, which has the effect of making the verse read, we have appointed um, you a watcher over him. If we look down two lines further, we find another place where this manuscript does not quite match what is in the Haft text. And the verse as it reads today says, Kadalika zayana likulli ummatin amalahum. To every people or nation we have made their deeds seem fair. Now the manuscript has an extra aleph when compared to the standard text before uh, the word amalahum. And the effect of this aleph is to make it plural, so the, their works or their deeds. So that's how it exists in the manuscript, but it is not the way it exists in the text today. Okay, um, here are a couple of others that I'm not going to go into in, uh, in detail because I want to get to the last one that I promised you. In 6105, there's an inserted olive, and 6106, there's at the beginning of that verse, there's an erasure leaving a gap, and in my experience, this is, and from all appearance on the page, the shape of the erasure and possibly some of the shadow of what is remaining. This looks like it would have been a, a while. If you were translating, it would be and, and, and then the verse continues, so... Uh, that's not at all unusual. It's very common to see that erased at the beginning of a verse because it so commonly starts uh, so many verses of the Quran that often it's written where it's not supposed to be written and then they erase it afterwards. Okay, and here we are right at the very end with the moment that I promised you, which is an alternate word. It's not the first alternate word that we've seen on the page, but I think it's one of the more interesting ones. This is uh, verse 6, 110. This part of the verse reads, Fi tuhyanihim. Yat Mahun, we let them wander blindly on in their insolence. And I've circled there the word that roughly corresponds to the word that we're looking at, fi tu yanihim, because in this manuscript, the word tu yanihim does not exist. Rather, its place is um, taken by the word hausihim. So it is an alternate word. Fi hausihim actually uh, is used, as you can see in another verse, not too far from here in the same surah, then leave them plunged in their foolish talk. So here at 6.110, with this alternate word, it has the uh, reading of we let them uh, remain plunged in their blindness, or, or remain immersed, perhaps, in their blindness. Makes sense, to my understanding, of, uh, of the Arabic. It, it does make sense. It's just an alternate, uh, alternate reading, a different word from what we have today. All right, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shown you today. If you have ideas or comments about what could have been going on at any point in the uh, discussion, please do leave those at the bottom of the page. Or if you have questions about anything else, I will be putting up a video. I'll be spending some time to answer your questions uh, and comments sometime in the coming week, I hope. So look out for that. And I want to make one additional remark about this particular manuscript. The density of corrections and variants in it is unusually high, more so than many other manuscripts I've looked at, and for this reason I've made it the subject of a couple of further uh, publications. The first one that will be released is this one called The Variant Quran, Fragment MS474-2003, which will be coming out uh, hopefully very soon, and that'll be geared toward a very general audience, probably most of, the, most of you who are watching this video. I've tried in it to make the material very accessible to folks who may not have language skills in Arabic or the technical background in, in manuscript and textual criticism. So be on the lookout for that if it's interesting to you. I'm gonna, it's going to have full page pictures of every single page, uh, full transcription and all those things. But the second edition, uh, which I'm working on, is for Brill Publishers in a series of books that's geared much more toward uh, scholarly audience. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, Hope you'll take the time to uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And then uh, also, I became aware, you, if you really want to be notified of every video that comes up as it comes up, please also hit the bell at the bottom, uh, and that will make sure that you get notified, uh, because I have found out that you actually will not be notified in every case uh, unless you hit that bell. So it's up to you, but if you want to know every time something comes out, uh, do hit that, and uh, we'll talk again soon.